We're going live. You say something. You know, actually, I was just going to say, this is the first time, and God, I can't remember, I'm on the homepage right now, and wow, has it changed. Oh, yes, I know. It's changed a lot, right? So uh, we've been working on it, and, well, I've been working on it, you know, adding pages, and we're switched over to Spreaker. That's, this is what. But you're going to get a beautiful new page. Everything's good. Uh, I'm trying to send Lewis a message in Facebook. Do you have that handy or no? Because, of course, uh, I'm signed I out can't. of Facebook. Why does everything bad have to happen to me? <laughs> Just I joking. Can. I got <laughs> my iPad right next to me. Right now, I'm signing in. Tell Lewis to, I don't, or if anybody's in the chat room, I have the chat room open too, and you could just let us know that you have sound and like, they don't even know because it doesn't play on its own. So like, I should probably type in the chat room like, if you're here. I just got in there. And if I say like one more time, it won't be cute. So I pretty much tell everybody that the first 30 or 40 seconds of your show will either keep people or make them leave. But we didn't have anybody to start with, so this one doesn't count. Yeah, yeah things happen. We don't care, right? I think I avoid having anybody around because we're scheduled for 8 o'clock and it's 9.30. But guess what? Should we tell them the news or no? Let's just talk baseball. We can talk talk baseball. Yeah. I don't Either way. Did you see the feud with Trevor Bauer and um, your boy Bregman? I did. I saw that tweet. That was great. And did you see? He's sitting there doing the Ferris Bueller song and having the bobblehead. That was great. Um, so ba- Bregman didn't think it was that funny and I didn't think, it, I mean, honestly, if I was Bregman, I said this this morning on, on Lenny's show that I would just be so annoyed. I wouldn't even like Trevor Bauer at all. I would really think he's just a dick. Well, I, really I, I could completely understand that if I'm Bregman. I mean, I love Bregman. Uh, don't get me wrong on that, but, uh, Bauer is just great. Uh, and he makes social media great for the fact that the way he handles taunting other players. Um, yeah, and I think that both of them are, are, like, above that, but, so I don't know if you heard the clip, but there's two different responses from Bregman. Bregman responded to the reporters in the locker room. He, um, was interviewed by the, one of the beat writers and basically questioned Bregman about it, and Bregman was just annoyed. You could just tell. It was like, I mean, I don't know how much of that is just bad timing with the media, because they always just seem to be so annoying anyway, but, you know, and add that to just the fact that, like, Trevor Bauer just basically just memed you on, you know, just totally trash talked you. And Garrett Cole is on the Houston Astros too. So I'm sure that Bregman and Cole are like buddy, buddy, you know, and like Cole absolutely hates Bauer. So anyway, he says, no, Trevor Bauer is not my friend. And then I found on YouTube or somewhere on Twitter, actually, I found it on Twitter. It's a clip of, it's a video clip of Bregman and a, I think it's his wife in the passenger seat. They're in their car, and he plays this, and they have a little conversation about it. And I'm going to play that for you now. I hope you can hear it. So I'll be checking it out. Wait. Yes. Can you? Could you hear it? Oh, hey. I cannot hear it. You couldn't hear it. What the hell? How no, can I, I didn't you hear, hear that. It? How can I make you hear it? See, that's the question of the day. Hi, Chloe. Happy lady. Sorry, but we're just checking this out and messing around with it. If you're listening and being annoyed. Don't worry. There's only seven people in here, and that would mean two of us, so five others. <laughs> yeah, how do I get this to let you hear it? I think there's And an one, two, three, four are away. It says Lou is here, though. Hey, Louis. Thanks for coming. I want to help... I want to help him hear the the sound clips, and I don't know how, but I'm sure there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. I really. Are you in the chat room right now? Yes, I am. Okay, turn this off for a second and listen to the listen to the show. I want you to hear this conversation between Bregman and his wife. All right, go ahead. I'm going to mute the microphone. Okay, dude. Did I dominate you last night? Dominate you last night? Did I dominate you last night? Are you serious? What's up, little buddy? Did I dominate you last night? I don't know if that's what he considers domination. Oh my seven God. pitch, seven pitch walk on six sliders, non-competitive, and then um, <laughs> ground out the second one zero, a line out the second. Yeah, but he'd love to probably face him again. Oh, yeah. 
faced him a lot. I know. Most of the most of the battles I've won. Is it hard to not respond though? Like to not be like. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. Okay, it's all good. I like it. I like that it. it feels good in April. Okay, so I'm going to bring back that guy. I hope he heard it. I hope you guys can hear it. Who the hell knows? That's <laughs> I guess trial by error. Trial. I did get to hear it. So you did. That was pretty funny, yes. Because I, once I hit live, I, I'm not sure if it was playing again through it because I did hear it on kind of an echo. Oh, you did? Yeah. Like, were you able to hear it in the chat room like as what we wanted? Yeah, that's how I was to listening it? to it. So I'm not sure if I was hearing it through both. But either way, I heard it. And it sounds right. Okay, good. So that's good that the listeners can. We don't have any in the chat now. But okay. So there's another one about it's just i just love this bauer shit dude i just love it it's so much fun for me it's like <laughs> I, you never know what he's gonna do next exactly um, and that's what i like about him you just you just never know what's gonna come out next and but i do think that if it i i think that i'm really biased towards bauer like i have an affinity to like him so he could pretty much do anything and i'm still gonna like him but I do think to myself sometimes what a dick he is. Oh, I, I agree. And if but, he uh, wasn't, it's like when you look at Big Poppy and he's trotting around the bases like a freaking donkey. Like, no, like a snail or whatever, the slowest animal you could think of. He's just trotting around, just enjoying. And, I mean, that's just despicable if you're not a Red Sox fan. Like, everybody that's not a Red Sox fan hates. I hated Jeter like that kind of thing. And if and oh, I, I feel I, like I, that... That in Houston, Bauer is like the devil to them. He's like the nemesis. Yeah, I can completely imagine that, just being a Sox fan. I mean, there's plenty of players I can think of. I've never liked watching Miggy come to town. <laughs> right. I mean, because, well, he probably just crushed you, right? Exactly. You I, I, even when they, were, when they were good, he was just beating up on anybody. that. I mean, just, it, you know, that's one of the worst things is, I don't care. Whenever the Sox are good, they're always losing to whoever the worst team in the division is. <laughs> oh well, that, okay, that's not that good, though, right? No, it, I don't get it. And nine times out of ten, it seems to be the Royals that seem to kick their ass when they're the last place team in the division. Sox are somehow winning, but it, yeah. they end up losing to that team. It makes no goddamn sense. One of those teams that you're supposed to just beat up on. Yeah, but that happens around. It happens around the baseball world. Like I know um, when well, the, the Yankees Sox- just had that streak. Yeah, they, well, whenever they go to Seattle and the Red Sox too, when they go to Seattle, they lose to Seattle, like the worst. You know, one of the worst teams. Not one of the teams you know you're supposed to beat up on. Obviously, the, yes, exactly. That's exactly right. That's my only comparison here. So if anybody's around, that'd be good tonight. Oh, there's a battle with the bad. What White Sox versus the Orioles? Well, hey, man. Take it when you can get it, right? Well, they, that, that's not even one that you can guarantee the Sox winning. Why? What do you mean, why? Well, They're you can't almost guarantee as bad as the Orioles. The Orioles got just pummeled this weekend, dude, by home like, runs from the Minnesota Twins. And didn't the White Sox just get pummeled by the Orioles? What was it, last night or the, not that long ago? I thought they just played. The Who? The Orioles and who? White Sox? I don't know. Let's check it out. Let's just do a little quick check on the White Sox right now. I'm going to check it out. I've already got their page open because I already know we're going to talk some White Sox. And, you know, they are a rebuilding team, and there is stuff to talk about. Um, They did just get their asses beat down by the Orioles. Or, no, wait. Hold on. One game, the first game, they won 12-2, so they put a beat down on the Orioles. And then the next game, they lost 1-9. And so they got pummeled then. It was like... (laughs) They switched roles or something, and then the next game they lost by only one run, though. And yeah, so, because uh, wasn't that the game that Rodon like got crushed in? Rodon gave up get... like he gave up like uh, eight runs and two and a third or something like that, two and two thirds. Honestly, in his last start, that's not good. I didn't even know Rodon got his ass handed to him after a couple of good starts. Yeah, L- let me let me see this. Well, last start I thought he did very good. Let me see this. Okay, maybe it was the one before that, but I know he just had one that he got crushed. I think that might have been yesterday or, like, really 
really that, recent. There we go. I think it was yesterday. That's just sucky for me because I didn't. Because I had left him on my bench for like his last two starts while he's dominating everybody because I didn't trust him. And then I pull him out to start him. And then it's like, oh, of course you're oh, going to yeah. give up eight runs. Here you go, dickhead. Three innings, nine hits, eight runs. Uh, hey, man. Uh, three walks. I was going to say he didn't walk anybody, but that would have been a total lie. Five strikeouts, and guess how many home runs he gave up? Uh, wasn't it like four or five? Three. Three, okay. And three innings, by the way. This is three innings we're talking about. Nine hits, yeah. eight earned runs, uh, three walks, and five strikeouts. How many batters do you think he faced in three innings? I'm going to guess probably like 17. 20. One freaking batters, dude. Guess how many pitches he threw? In it has three to be innings. like 80. <laughs> 85 pitches, three innings, 21 batters, a shit ton of home runs, a couple of walks, and a bunch of bullshit. I'm not kidding. I'm pretty sure his ERA jumped up two runs because I'm pretty sure he was sitting at like a 298 before that start. Um,. He was doing just fine until you came along. He was doing just <laughs> fine. <laughs> In my world, he was still doing fine until you just came along and re- told me what happened. That was yes. bad. Uh, and his next start is against the Orioles again. Oh, good. Well, I just don't... Holy crap. How can you even be like, oh, he got pummeled by the Orioles. Maybe he was just having a bad day. Let's just chalk it up to that. But Rodon is so questionable anyway. I mean, honestly, he's the biggest question mark ever. Heading oh, into the season. and I agree with you because look, listen just to this season. So the first start against Kansas City, five and a third, three hits, two earned, one walk, six strikeouts. Next, uh, he goes Cle- against Cleveland, six innings, two hits, no earned, one walk, and nine strikeouts. Then right. he goes to Tampa. This was or this is the game that me uh, we brought Chloe to for her first game. Okay. Four and two thirds, eight hits, four earned, five walks, nine strikeouts. Wait, is this Rodon? Yes. Oh no. Okay, four fourteen against the Yankees. Six innings, three hits, two earned, two walks, five strikeouts. Four nineteen against the Tigers. Six innings, three hits, one earned, three walks, and six Ks. Then again, the Tigers. Three innings, nine hits, eight earned, three walks, five Ks. Oh, okay. I mean, you can't even predict that because Talk when you're Jekyll supposed to Hyde. sit him, it, Je- a lot of these, you're supposed to sit him and, like, against the Yankees. I feel that's one you're supposed to sit him against. And he goes out there and gives you a pretty solid outing. You're supposed to be able to play him against probably the Tigers. And he goes out there, gives you three innings, nine hits, eight earned. It's like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this guy? So if you didn't look at it that close, because, I mean, I have 10 leagues, so I don't, honestly, I have to admit, I just don't take that much time to look into players, like certain players, I mean, I can take in as much information as I can take in, but I haven't felt the need to really investigate his n- game log, because his numbers overall have not, well, I haven't checked them since this last blow up where he just acted like a dick, but you know what I mean, his overall numbers don't look like that. So because it's because that he does so good in an outing and kind of makes up for his bad outing. So it's basically we're living two extremes here, and it's meshing out to be just in the middle. Yeah, and I mean, it's so unpredictable. He's almost impossible to stream. He's one of those guys that I, I'm not kidding. I'm probably going to shop him in every league after he gets his next good start. Hola, Aloha. Aloha's here. I made Aloha a great page today. He should look at his show page. Oh, Talk- but you forgot ours. Oh, are you kidding me? That's okay. I, I just want you to know that um, whoever out there that I forgot to make a show page for, it's not have anything to do with you personally. I actually didn't even make a show page for Lewis, and uh, I just got done the other day with it. It's just because there's no real reason, just maybe that I overlooked it. You know what I mean? There's like 20 shows, but I promise it's not anything personal and i definitely ain't i'm not trying to like not put our own show up right i figure if i do if i forget ours last then maybe people won't feel so bad that i forgot theirs too you know like exactly at least somebody's went up after theirs aloha okay check out your page so we were talking about trevor bauer for a minute and then we went over and talked about rodon who is like a tale of two tales this year jekyll and hyde 
and that's why his numbers look just fine if you don't do some deep diving because his outings are just so extreme either really good or really shitty and that's the way that the cookie crumbles well the worrisome part is i don't think he's gone pe- yeah he hasn't gone over six innings so far oh, okay maybe because he throws too many pitches very possibly uh, but you know the goofy part with that it only the start against tampa where he got lit up again over four and two thirds was yeah. uh that was the most walks he's given up with five. Everything else, nothing over three. Okay, so so uh, I mean, oh, it's not. You know, what do we even have to bad. compare it? What do we compare it to? Two. I mean, what what in the world do we compare his? Like, which one do we believe? There's no answer at this point because he. Well, just hasn't... I think we have to go off. Yeah, I think you just have to go off of his history, just because of the fact of what we've had to see with him. He's usually somebody that. His ERA is sitting around where he's at right now of almost just under five. It's under five. Thank goodness it's under five still because that just his latest outing is, don't get me wrong, his numbers are not going to be looking average anymore. You know, like I haven't looked at him since his last blow up. But speaking of blow ups or whatever, we're talking pitchers right now. And Zach Wheeler was talking about what it would take for the Mets to sign him to an extension and I have a clip of video for or I have a clip of sound if you want to hear it but I did put it in the notes and I put a link in the notes too so if you want to like actually read what he says you could do that too I did read that already okay I'm gonna play it everybody's goal everybody's number one goal is to make a free agency Um, you know I think that's where you really make your money and uh, sort of you know set your career so you know, I, I love being here. I love being with the Mets. Fans are unbelievable. Uh, there's nowhere else better to play than New York. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm this close to free agency. So, you know, it's, if they want to offer me, it's, it's got to be pretty close to what I get there in free agency, you know, just to be fair. Um, you know, I, I love, like I said, I love being here. I want to stay here. Um, it's just one of those things, you know, it's, it's still up in the air. And uh, we'll see what happens down the road. Okay, so I mean, I oh, is, I think it's going to play. No, no. Are you going to? No. I think that it's, you know, a very uncomfortable conversation for players to have. And I'm sure that they have a certain set of responses that they use, you know, that they're just kind of trained to say if they get asked about what type of payroll they are going to be expecting to be. And with Wheeler and the Mets, it's just the Mets are always just a shady situation when it comes down to this, right? Yeah, I mean, the Mets always seem to kind of get burned out of extensions with pitchers. Well, I mean, they won't uh, I mean, sign uh, – what? who's their – DeGrom. He's having a little – Well, they did fit. sign DeGrom. Okay, finally they did. That's good. I did not – I mean, I remember hearing something about it, and I'm glad that they did, but it wasn't cute. It, when he went in there, when you, I just don't think that is a great way to go about it because going in there and telling them, like, what you demand is – pretty risky but i guarantee it was well that him. was actually the goofy part was uh it was his former agent gm yes. now that was saying if you're not gonna sign him trade him and then yes. now all of a sudden you're the gm and it okay. sat there for what like six months with him dude isn't before that an he interesting... finally took care of something it's a it's a really interesting dynamic with that situation because i you know that the agent is where the one that came up with the idea of going in there and being like, this is what I demand. That was all the agent, dude. The player did not come up with that idea. And so the fact that his manager is kind of like the guy in charge, really a little bit. I mean, he really is the one with the control of the finances from what we've seen so far. And in Metsville, this ex agent Brody is really, the guy that decides who gets what. And so I think in a sense, like DeGrom is turning his, his agent's ideas against him kind of in a way, you know what I mean? Yeah, like it, he's turning his own, this guy's own suggestions or whatever against him. Uh, and I, I can definitely see that just because it, I mean, basically he has to look at it from the other side of the table now being the GM. Absolutely, and he probably is the one that put the little idea in DeGrom's ear to begin with. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, and that just kind of 
put stress on the whole situation right away, I think, just because he's initially the one who tried to get DeGrom to really push for it to yeah. say, hey, get the money or get out of town. And now all of a sudden he's in the situation to control it. Is he going to give the money or get him out of town? And yeah, he kind of stalled on it for a while. So I don't know. Um, I'm sure that his new agent, whatever, was also telling him that exactly the same thing because that's the agent's job. It's like having – it's like working for the um, – I don't know. It's like working two completely opposite jobs. Like you, the agent has a completely different goal than the manager of the team. They see things uh, completely different when it comes to money. Yeah, well – Especially these new days when it almost seems like it's the front office that creates the lineup. I can always see there's a lot of stress between management and front office and, and uh, the money and players. And uh, I mean, uh, I, I'm kind of shocked there hasn't been a strike yet. Okay, well, let's just hope that that doesn't happen. But Zach Wheeler... I, I don't want it to, but it, I don't think uh, it you is. Know, there's just so much with it. I'm kind of shocked there isn't just because it seems like everybody is at everybody's throats. Well, I mean, I don't know what there really is to complain about. Bryce Harper and Manny Machado got signed for $300 million apiece. And the players that didn't get signed or haven't been signed yet, I mean, that's just part of, uh, you know, that's just part of, Mark, it's just part of doing business. I mean, if you, that's what you risk when you go in there and you tell them that you demand three years. That's what you risk. Okay, you risk not having a job, and that's the. Uh, unfortunately, that's the way it works. The negotiating tactics, like uh, who's going to need who more, and the player will lose this battle. You know what I mean? And and I just don't see. I think that the fact that um, the teams are paying out pretty much, they are paying. They are for the real talented ones. There's a couple that are still out there, free agents that shouldn't be, but that's the way the mark. You know, that's the way it is. It's business. Well, and it always seems every year there's a couple of guys we talk about saying how they shouldn't be out there, but they are. And I mean, you kind of see it from both sides. It, how long can teams continually keep blocking their prospects from coming up and saying they're not ready? And even still, uh, the guys that are trying to rebuild and they want to save the money until they're see- they feel they're ready to make the push for free agency. You can't blame them for not wanting to do that and bringing up some of their subpar prospects to fill in the gap for right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, anyway, I don't think that Zach Wheeler said anything crazy in that interview, basically just that he loves playing for the Mets, but that they're going to have to give him something fair, which is without – I mean, that's a given, and it's just – it's when he says it like market value I think to myself like what the hell is market value I mean it seems like market value is either like really extreme or just mediocre and mediocre means maybe less than I mean and Zach Wheeler is is risking it because the, um he had one good year so far and the rest of the year since he's ever been in baseball he's just been injured the whole time so like if somebody offered you you're going to have to you're going to have to like weigh it out a little bit, like the risk versus reward for the team. uh, What if he doesn't have a good season? I mean, he's had a, so far it's hard to tell what he's going to be like this year, but he's had some good outings and some poor outings, but Zach Wheeler is risky because it's not like he's, yeah, I don't know who to compare him to, but he's not Chris sale. You know what I mean? Like he hasn't been out there dominating for any length of time. He's not Bartolo Colon. (laughs) <laughs> Bartolo Colon, dude. Okay, that's not a good comparison. But Bartolo I know, but Colon I, it was the job. first name that popped in my head. What about CC Sabathia? He... How about if we, we give some love to CC for a minute here? This guy, I think that if I wasn't such a Yankee hater, I would really like CC Sabathia. Just in general, I think he's just an easygoing guy. It just you know has had some struggles in life, like a real human being. Had some alcohol issues. Had a, a freaking heart problem, like his. You know, he had surgery, he had clogged artery, you know, like he was about ready to have a heart attack anyway, so he had surgery for that. He's just really always comes out there, does his job. He's He's been around forever, and the Yankees just keep signing him, even though it's he had a contract that you would question, like, maybe four years ago if he was going to even make it through the contract. And it's like, this is why, you know, we don't sign these long contracts. But actually, he made it through his contract, and now it's like two years later. Yeah, uh, you know, actually... uh I can't remember who I was listening to. It was on MLB Network, but they were talking about uh, a lot of the Hall of Famers. This was uh, 
I want to say like a you know late morning, early afternoon show, and I can't remember. It was before Russo comes on, so before like noon, and, one uh, o'clock, somewhere yeah. in there. And uh, they're talking about with CC of how they don't feel he should be a Hall of Famer, even though he with the numbers he has. And then they're sitting there trying to go through some of the guys. And they actually kind of made a good point with it. It, it's kind of not that you know the three thousand strikeout mark that because he has he hit that yet or is he close I'm to it? I'm looking him up right now. Just give me a minute. Okay, because they were talking about him being at two fifty and three thousand, and that's oh kind of you know like the Hall of Fame. Okay, starting punchline ticket. But Hold you look on, at it he, if yeah, you're pitching for the Yankees and you pitch that long, how do you not have over a hundred and fifty two hundred wins? I saw him on um was is this the interview with um hardball or hard whatever the f- Oh god I, I that's why I said it's, I can't remember who a, it was that they we were talking about it but I, um it was the show with the two guys that show with the uh two guys Chris um, Is it uh Spielborgs maybe? No, it was Kevin Millar. Oh, it's, it's Kevin Millar. Oh, 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 oh intentional and, talk. Yes, it's on intentional talk. Chris Rose. I think that they interviewed him the other day, and they were talking about this three thousand strikeout. He's actually at twenty nine ninety seven, right? And so he needs okay. three more. And he sa- they asked him if it like bothers him when he goes out on the mound, and he says he would love to just get it over with because he does think about it. Like when he's getting um, ahead in the count, he'll be like, "Okay, it pops in his mind." And he says he just really wants to just get it over with so he can continue to be doing baseball, which makes total sense. And then they asked him about Vlad Jr., and he was like. He just started cracking up, and he said, "You know, it's time to go home when you're pl- now. You played a father and a son, you know." Like, <laughs> and it was a pretty funny joke, I think. But he's such a likable guy; I just like him, and I do uh, believe yes, that, that. I mean, he is the meat and potatoes, and you could call it what you want. The numbers aren't going to tell you this, but he is absolutely the rotation could not be what it is without him. I mean, he doesn't look like he provides like excellent He is stats. a clubhouse guy, I think. He's he a, is I, mean, I think he's, he's somebody mentor. great to have around. He's a lot of fun. He's probably a very great mentor to young players. Yes. I uh, I think he's just one of those fun clubhouse guys. Uh he has some very good, you know, he's made over the years, he's made great friendships at, at, with the other Yankees players like Jeter and um just there's a few of them that are just really, I don't know. I just like CC. I think that if uh, he was on my favorite team, I would be so pleased about him. And the Yankees fans, you know, they love to bitch and they, you just never hear him bitching about CC because he fucking deserves that. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. And I, I do agree with that, but I, I'm just curious as to what your take is with that after I had heard that. Uh, because uh, I, I think that Lenny would say he's a Hall of Famer, but he's a Yankees fan. So. He's definitely got the bias opinion for it, so I'm just I curious actually, as to what you would think. I think I actually tried to argue with Lewis over this at one point. I think I actually tried to question if he was a Hall of Famer. I think. I'm not positive of this, but honestly, dude, like, look at his, from 2005 to 2019, he has pitched nearly every single year 200 innings. The least he pitched in the year, I mean, he pitched in 2014, he pitched 46 innings, okay? Obviously, he was hurt that year. The rest of the years, I mean, of course, like last year, he pitched 153. And then the year before that, he pitched 147, 179, 167. And then before that, it was like all 200s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine straight years of... 200 innings and then now after that one year off and like four more years of just solid just innings eater you know like I don't care I just think that longevity should count somewhat and also just the presence in the clubhouse and the and what he's done for the Yankees organization dude as a whole oh yeah because he, you can't say he wasn't a part of uh what was it oh nine for the championship with them he, I, I, I think he was brought in that year, and they won it. I wonder if he's only has one. Did he? Does he only have one? I think he only has the one with them. But take a look at his ERA. I mean, it, it's been over. His ERA is in the mid threes the whole time. He had a couple years where it skyrocketed it up. But honestly, this guy has an overall over in however many years this is. I'll say about fifteen years. He's got 
a three six nine ERA overall. Like, I'm sorry, he's he is twenty nine ninety seven strikeouts. I don't know how many pitchers get to that point, but he's got literally thirty four hundred and eighty five innings on his arm. Thirty four hundred and eighty five. That is actually really insane because think about how many pitches that is. Are you? I can find out that too, but I just find this like I don't think I've. I mean, I unless you're looking at pitchers like Randy Johnson and like old school pitchers that used to pitch complete games and stuff all the time, you just don't see 3,500 innings on pitchers' arms. Yeah, anymore. that yeah, I agree with you on that. Uh, I mean, the only way that the guys get that is by you know pitching a lot of complete games and by pitching for what probably 15 plus seasons. Um. Okay, let's. I don't even know why this turned into a freaking Yankee Sabathia love fest. Okay, let's just get on with life about this. I do not want to talk about that anymore, but I do give him some love. DJ LeMahieu was held out today of the game, but his tests only show inflammation, so he'll be back in the lineup. Thank you. Or the there you the go Yankees. talking about Yankees again. I know, and and <laughs> I wanted to just get all the Yankee shit out of the way right away. Peraza, Jose Peraza has been pretty bad. We've had people call in the show and ask us about Peraza. We've had I have answered several questions about him in recent days. Man, if I saw Peraza on the waiver wire in my league, I would be on it like a freaking hawk. Yeah, I I couldn't let that go by without me trying to ma- at least make some sort of claim onto him. I mean, management moved him up to the leadoff spot today. That was to kick him into gear, and that there's no news that could be better for a fantasy owner's ears to hear than the fact that your player, who's in a horrible slump, just got moved to leadoff spot. Yeah, now it's you're going to tell me he's going to get more at bats to try to get kick started. Thank I you. I think he's going to get more at bats. I think he's going to um, feel more comfortable and i just really do i I hope it works i mean shoot well it's either he's going to feel more comfortable knowing he's protected a little bit better and he's going to have to see a little bit better of pitches or the he's going to feel more pressure realizing he has to get on base more uh for these guys to be able to drive him in he last year when matt carpenter started the season maybe it was a year before but he had a horrible start to the season and that they put him in they moved him over to the leadoff spot, and he just started hitting like crazy. This was actually a couple of years ago, but I think of that when I saw the news today that he was moved up to the leadoff spot. It is definitely at least more at bats, right? So we'll see what happens there, but don't drop him yet. He is not droppable at this point and at this juncture. Um, let's talk no, cause about... because you can't tell me there's anybody out there on the waivers that you would rather have over him. Uh, people are dropping him like flies, so keep an eye out because these people that are not as um, educated. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I I agree with you. It's some those are things I always go and look for. Is you know if I haven't gotten on there for a day or two, the the first thing I do is go look at last the last couple of transactions just because it, maybe the guys don't pop up on the waivers right away, and I want to see who's been getting dropped just because those are a lot of times guys I want to add. I agree. Um, I, well, it's always good to be watching, especially like right now is a big deal in fantasy because this is when rookies get called up or like prospects get called up and there's additions all the time. This is like when teams are really supposed – like I think they're really deciding who the regulars are going to be and and now it's time to bring up the prospects if if so. But there's a lot of lineup changes going on right now. So And, and people are getting fed up and they act too early. They react too early and they start dropping guys like Peraza. And I would say to them, don't be an idiot. Don't be. Uh, I really thought we just spoke too soon because I, I'm watching MLB Network and I couldn't see who it was at first, but I just saw somebody get beamed with a ball by Familia on the Reds and then it turned out to be Jose Iglesias. Oh. I was like, uh oh, it's just Peraza that just got cracked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even doubt it, dude. I wouldn't even doubt it, I swear. So there's some players in, that are maybe performing a little bit too good that might be and I I just put a section in the I just put a segment in here about trade like possible people trade pieces like possible trade pieces and Marcus Stroman's on here if people own him it's because they picked him up for like a dollar or free because he wasn't being drafted very much due to his I mean, the last couple of seasons have just been a nightmare for this guy. He just uh, walks way too many hitters. He gets blisters. He's kind of a dick. I just feel like 
he's had just not that good of a track record lately. But we do know that he can he can strike batters out. Um, and he's been very effective this season. He actually leads the American League in ERA, and um, he ranks second in all of baseball. It's saying, I mean, according to the the news, he's just throwing a ton less sinkers, and he's increased his sliders. So he's got like his highest strikeout and his um, highest swinging strikeout rate he ever has had. So. Was this for Castillo? We're talking about Stroman. Okay, Castillo sorry. is excellent right now. Castillo is on the list, too. I skipped him uh, because... I just saw Davis drop in an RBI single and get caught in a rundown, so my attention was drawn away. Which Davis? Chris Davis. See Chris Davis that everybody hates and is actually <laughs> doing a little, little bit of things to make you wonder if he's worth owning. I don't know if he's worth hating. I mean, honestly, you didn't. Not right if now. If you didn't know what you were getting into when you got this guy on your team, then there's a problem here. You know what I mean? Like the bars in. I'm telling you, the Baltimore fans they love this guy. Oh, because I, I was every time something. he gets a hit, they give free drinks away all over the town. Oh God, that's great. So, well, he just dropped a little RBI single in on the socks right now. Which people are drinking up. They they even made a shot for him. They even named a shot after him. So that's what they're drinking right now. Cheers to them. Have fun with that. I'm sure it's like something like uh, what was Easy's drink? His uh, oh god, what was it a tilted cha cha or something? Mm-hmm. You remember that? That was a little while ago. I don't. Oh, it was some terrible drink that Easy decided <laughs> to make. Are you kidding me? What? I gotta know. It, this. it did not sound good. You'd have to ask him everything that I he will. put into it, but. It was. It sounded like a lot of like hot sauce and things like that. He was putting into it with liquor. <laughs> I hope liquor. he put some booze in there so that you don't taste. Oh yeah, it so bad. there was there was some booze in it. I just don't remember. I'm hoping Z is listening because I see him in the chat room. There we go. The, the tilting cha cha with hot sauce. What was in it though? So okay. he says it was great. Oh, he's right, here. Okay, good. I'm so happy he's here. Okay, I love it to have people hanging out with us. Um. Strowman is not reliable. Long story short, Strowman is not trustworthy. And what he's doing right now with his ERA leading the American League and ranking second in all of baseball is a misnomer. It's not real. It's fake news. And it needs to be, well, I would say try to trade this guy. He's at his highest value he will ever be in his career again. Yeah, I I agree with you on that. Uh, Strowman... uh... He has, uh, what was that year he went off and just had this great year? Was it like 15 or something like that? I would say about, uh, yeah, about then, maybe 16. It, it was a couple his years ERA ago. was like just under three or right around three. I mean, he just had a fantastic year. Like but, 200 strikeouts or something. Yeah, it, but he's not that pitcher. It, I mean, uh, but this is the closest to any sort of that value you're going to get on him. So especially in a dynasty, if you somehow for some reason sat on him this long, if it's a redraft, whatever, try to get what you can for him because you can very easily upgrade your pitching just through a quick move with him. And I mean, uh, actually, who would is... you try to who would you try to target for him? Okay, so if I was gonna want to get rid of Strowman, I would I would take you know what I would take whatever I needed, but I would say like a maybe a like a Justin Smoke or maybe like these are just players coming out of my top of my head. Let me take a look. But just probably somebody mediocre that maybe I could rely on that is going to well, just you be know mediocre. What? Why not? It, depending on what your team looks like, why not put together a package? I mean, obviously this matters on who you have, what your needs are. Like you said, mm-hmm. take a Strowman and somebody else who, uh, I mean, it's got to be somebody who can actually put something together, not just a flavor of the month guy, and go after an owner who has Turner right now. Who? Which Turner? Trey? Trey. Oh, hell no. Nobody's giving you Trey Turner for this, man. Well, that's why I said you have to actually put in a player worth something. Okay, how about like, but, uh, go ahead. I'm uh, still looking. <laughs> well, I, I'm thinking of, uh, God. How about Colton it's, Wong? Like a Colton Wong. Is that good enough? You might be able to get him to bite on something like that, actually. I mean, you're not asking too much. Colton Wong or, like, Max Kepler, even though it's probably a bad time to try to get a guy like Max Kepler since this weekend he crushed everybody. 
But oh, maybe- yeah. Kepler, and, you know, Kepler is somebody that I've held on to in one dynasty league for years. Just, I, I traded Buxton and kept Kepler. So I think and that you could get – I mean, I think you could probably get Kepler. That's about right, I think, for a guy like Marcus Stroman. And I do definitely think you should try at least something. Try. Yeah, I, I think that would be worth it because – I. I mean, I think that Kepler is long term probably going to end up being the better player overall compared to Buxton, at least hitter wise. Buxton, he's going to give you more power. Yeah, I'm saying not for the Twins. I love Buxton. He hit his first. So do I, but I, I, I think that Kepler is probably their better player long term. You mean okay? So in real baseball, yes, the Minnesota Twins they love Kepler. They really do. And, and that's what I'm saying is I think he's got more of a home. He's. They're really gonna baby him and give him a lot more chances. I mean, look at how many times they've. Look at how bad Kepler has been along with Buxton, and look at how many times they've sent Buxton down to AAA and things like that. Well, that's because Max Kepler every year gets better, and even though you can't see it in his outside numbers, his exit velocity, his hard hit rate, his, you know, he just gets better every year. And even though right now I think he's just kind of over, you know, I think he's not this good, but. He's always been just like a student of the game. And I think that's why the management loves him so much. But I would totally get, I would try to get Rugnet Odor for Stroman, maybe. I don't have a problem with taking him on right now. He just got off the DL. And what about Odabel Herrera? Maybe not, maybe. I'm just saying, addition by subtraction, because this is how I feel about Stroman. He is not going to be anywhere worth anything in about two months he's going to be worth nothing that's my opinion i don't know that well uh uh, i mean you know another guy and because you got a lot of pitchers on your list somebody that i would actually look to be trading right now because you're not going to get a better value than where he is Mm -hmm. tim anderson oh tim anderson so Oh, he's so good i can't believe you would say that this is the white i love tim anderson but I don't even think that he's going to stay with the White Sox for the whole year if he even does half of what he has so far for the season. You think they're going to trade him? Absolutely, like because just, they drafted a shortstop in the first round last year anyway. Oh, they did. Nick did Madrigal or something? Magrigal? I, I don't know how the hell to pronounce his well, last name. That's interesting because he really is, a, you know, he's another guy that I think is an important part of that t- structure of that team. I really well, yeah, do. but they're so terrified of the glove. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, it's shortstop. So. And actually, I don't think he's been that bad this year. Well, if that's the case, why not move him to second? He won't he's get been, as many balls hit to him. I don't think. Uh, I have no idea what he's done defensively, but offensively, he's been great. Well, you know what? I haven't seen him make sports centers not top 10 this year. So. Oh, do they have usually, that? Oh, yeah. Every Friday they put that out. Oh, they have what? They have not hot list? That's pretty fun. Uh, the not top 10. The not top 10, okay. Yes. Uh, and it's just he hasn't made that yet. Blooper. Not that I've seen, so. Which ones uh, have and, you seen? Who has made this list? Oh, you know? it's just I'll... some of the funniest errors you'll see. Oh, so like, Seattle's on there all the time. Th- uh, yes, but. Uh, Endeavors, Raphael it, Devers. It's basically think of uh, like the Jose Canseco ball going off his head for a home run. Those are the <laughs> kinds of plays that they're showing you. Man, I saw and they're some... playing that those kind of goofy musics, like uh, that you're just gonna sit there and laugh at because you feel like you're watching clowns. I will tell you, a clown. Okay, clowns. Yes, I just picture yeah in my head the clowns, like some old lady's closet with all kinds of just nasty, scary looking, mean clowns. So thanks for that. But I saw some great defensive plays this weekend. I think that, like, um, who is it? It's not it's DeJong or it's uh I it's Saint Louis player. Is DeJong on Saint Louis? Yeah, DeJong's on Saint Louis. He is amazing. He's underrated in every way. He dives and goes everywhere and gets defensive balls and robs people of hits all the time. And Piscotti like Piscotti ran so far the other day to catch I just see these guys out in the, you know, defensively, and it's amazing some of the the lengths that they can run quickly, and how that they're able to really see where the ball is going. 
and just hustle their asses over there as quickly as possible. And, and read the way that it's slicing off the bat and things like that. I agree with you on that. Yeah, yes, it's, just, yeah. Uh, it's a very underrated thing of what they do because when you just sit there and walk, when we played it, it, just not at the level they have it, it looks so easy what they do. And it just looks cool. They look like they fly around. They have like, literally, they just look like they fly around. That's Did why you, I love when my buddies will sit there and argue with me and they'll say that baseball isn't that hard and basketball is harder. It's like, okay, it, let me stick my hand in your face while you shoot a three and then let me throw you a couple 90-mile-an-hour fastballs and let's see which one you're better at. I'm pretty sure if you typed into Google um, how like how difficult it is to hit a baseball, uh, you'll come up with some articles that are just – eye-opening about how oh, yeah. hard it actually is to make contact with the barrel. Well, was it, isn't it like six-tenths of a second you of have reaction? Like, so it automatically takes your brain at least like three-tenths of a second just to know that the ball is coming at you, okay? Just to register that you see it coming. And then it takes another three-tenths or four-tenths of a second to decide what to do about it. It's literally just a, a millisecond oh, yeah. of time uh, that... And in that entire time, the ball is already moving. left the pitcher's hand, and it's in the catcher's mitt. And it's Basically moving all over quick. the place. Like, the ones that come out straight like a fastball and then just drop down, like what I was seeing Glass oh, the now do. Ballers? Yeah, oh, God, that is... Glass now that... is doing this. It's If you could get some footage from the other day when he just kicked Sale's ass, you know, that day. Oh, yeah, it kind of looks like he's throwing a curveball at 90 miles an hour. It's it's really a great sight to see. I did like watching it, but I do think that maybe I don't know. I'd probably keep him. He's on this list. It's a trade pieces list, but I'm not sure that I would even trade him at this point because you know even- what? I'll tell you right now. In this uh, roto league that I'm in, that's uh, like a semi kind of dynasty. Mm-hmm. Whatever pitch I am on on the whatever pitcher I'm on the fringe of dropping, that is the dude who's going to go off next year. Oh yes. Yes, I right, dropped like him. Bauer yeah. when he was seventeen and nine, and had that four some odd ERA two years ago, just for him to go off last season. Oh. This last season, I dropped Glasnow for this upcoming season. Now look at what the hell's going on. So, Whoever yes. the hell I decide to drop, Adam, draft him. They are going to be a top ten pitcher. It seems it's okay, Holy dude. Shit. Sometimes you have to take one for the team, okay? That's how I, it works. That's what it seems like. Well, and I heard so, you saying that about uh, Gla- uh, uh, Fran Mill. Mill or, yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's not a joke, dude. It's that's why when you were saying this about just now about Glass now and then um, Bauer before that, I'm thinking, holy shit, are we like just we're just jinx totally, me and you? Because as soon as I bench a guy, he will hit. So I will take one for the team, and that's how I look at it. Okay. Look yeah. at uh, look uh, at your boy Glass you know, now. I'll... Let's rub this in. Let's just open this wound up and pour some salt into it right now. Pittsburgh, he just was I don't know, it was getting to the point where you just wondered if he was going to even turn into anything that we expected him to be, right? We were all excited about well, this they guy. Were start, they were they were making him a reliever. They were hoping he would at best turn out to be a closer at that point. Yes, when they got when Tampa Bay got him, but Tampa Bay dude has a way of uh reviving a pitcher yes i think they do there's certain clubs in baseball that are just unbelievable at it like houston is one too i don't know you know a lot about they well what i do know is that houston is like number one with all their analytics they have all of the top notch like high-end brand new technology to um in the pitching well, st louis does too because they took the password from houston remember oh yes yeah right so they probably just <laughs> you know what they probably like bought the machines after they hacked in because they just had to like because they got caught and it's like no 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 we have to have this (laughs) (laughs) okay so but one thing about glass now is that he's well he's 25 this year he's pitched 36 innings so far 27 hits three home runs seven walks 38 strikeouts 175 era for this guy and when i saw his um i actually just watched a recap and i watched a couple pitches of his and i'm telling you i'm now sold on him i'm a fan and i think that I'm much more confident in him than I was at the beginning of the season. I did not draft him on any team. Do you own him at all? Were you willing to? No, I do not own him. I was afraid to take him. I was too, but I will give it to him. I couldn't get a read on him last year either because I'd leave him on the bench and he's pitching like shit, he's pitching like shit, uh, and I'm starting him. Then I'd 
put him on the bench, and then he goes off and does like six innings hit lists. It's like, I hate you. He's, like, what the hell? He's got two pitches. Glassner, he's got two pitches. He throws the four-seam fastball and his curveball. That combines for 90% of the throws that he does. He's just two two pitches. That's it. So the difference between – I'd like to be looking at the difference in velocity between these two pitches uh, that he uses because it, – It's substantial. I, I want to say his curveball is like 78 and his fastball is mid-90s, upper 90s. Okay. so I mean, good, it's yeah. quite a bit of a difference. And then uh, what's his other pitch? It's either a slider or a changeup. He doesn't throw it a lot at all, obviously. But I, he I clearly know. needs to develop it. Uh, it's one of those two, I believe. Well, only in my notes what I have is that 90% of the time it's between a curveball and a four-seam fastball. Um, and that's what he's been using that's being effective this year. And uh, I always just I always question how good a pitcher can be sustained, like how how much can he sustain of this when you only have two choices? Like the the idea of adding pitches is just really, you know, one to protect the other two, and then you need another one to protect that one. You know, I just really feel like that, well, I'm a Bauer fan, so, I mean, he, the theory of adding pitches to throw batters off is, like, something I'm a big fan of. However, he's uh, very effective. I agree effective. with you on that. If I'm a GM, I, I don't think I'm drafting a guy as a starting pitcher if he doesn't throw at least four pitches. I have a it, they don't have to be plus pitches, but he needs to at least know how to throw four solid pitches. Average, like right, just you yeah. have to be able to throw these. Um, he's got a, his left on base percentage is ninety one percent, so that's going to come down eventually. That's just got to like fix itself. The batting average on balls in play is two fifty seven right now, so it's kind of low. That'll also average out some i mean he's got a 153 era so even with these things even if he had an 80 left on base percentage and a 300 batting average on balls in play which is normal he would have still like a 25 well let's be honest if the season finished today the rays have had the cy young two years in a row (laughs) what last year with snell yeah and this year with glass now because i I, what is it with their pitchers you have those two and Archer had a, such a strong run. Uh, they've had David Price, who had such a strong run. Uh, and I'm missing a ton of pitchers in here that they just. Why are they just such a breeding ground for pitchers? Well, who is David their Price, pitching coach? I don't know who it is, but because holy hell, you got to give Tampa Bay credit for all that they do. They really do a great job working with a low budget, low fan base. Um, they always put together something, even no though they're fans. Not, they don't spend a lot of money. Yeah, like they're just, but they're competing against the Red Sox and the Yankees pretty much every season. It, that is the one team that I'm not kidding. They can be playing the Yankees for a season clinching, like uh, for this, uh, not the series, but for like who's going to win the division, and they're going to have like six thousand people in the stadium. <laughs> I, I don't get it. The they did ninety they, wins, and they average like seven, eight thousand people in their crowd. Well, it's so nice in Florida. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, it's I not a nice part of Florida it where it, where where they're yeah, and their ballpark is not in the great. You understand all about not being in a great part of town, right? Yes, I do. Okay, Chris Paddock, this guy in San Diego, everybody likes him right now, right? Do you like Chris Paddock? Are you uh, surprised? I think this guy is. A uh, I'm very surprised, but I didn't take any chances on him either. A lot of the guys on your list, I, I don't really have any ownership on. Okay, so, honestly. All right, so you can't really put these in. How about Matthew Boyd? Do you ever? I got nothing him? of him. I, if, I'm looking through it right now. Uh, through all the guys for your trading, I have nobody. Okay. Through the two starts, okay. I've got Freeland. Okay. Uh, I'm still scrolling. Wow. There's Corbin. a lot of names, like everybody. Yes, There's I know. A lot. I mean, I don't know if this is open. like, is this not normal, this many? It, to me, it felt it, like. It seems like a lot. Holy shit, like for days, there's two star pitchers this week. For days, like literally, how many pages is this thing? Eight pages. Same yeah. pages. Well, I've got more on the AL side because I do have Giolito, who I, I just you, can't see myself owning. pulling the trigger on. You own so, him. It, yes. Uh, I have Montez in a league, Snell, and that is it. Oh, what about no, I Yanni Chirinos, dude? Do you know anything about Yanni Chirinos? 
uh, Texas, right? Uh, yeah, he's going to. No, that's the. Okay, hold on a minute. I'm not. No, that's even Robinson Chirinos. Or how about um, the catcher? That's is that is that Chirinos? Yeah, that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah, Chirinos, the pitcher. This would be uh, Yanni. I, I he's Tampa name, Bay. Yes. Hello, he's there Tampa Bay. There we go. Okay. He, so this I knew guy, who he was in the name. I just couldn't think of where he was at. I picked him up actually because he had he was on my waiver wire last week and he was getting a start and he was getting wins and I was like, okay, this guy's getting wins. I'm serious about these pitchers that get wins that are not starting pitchers. Even though this guy is a starting pitcher, I'm talking about guys like um, Gant, John Gant. Like the Walden guy in Boston, there's several relievers in baseball. I would say there's a good maybe five or six or seven that you can get right off the waiver wire that are getting wins as relievers because they're being used as effectors or openers or whatever the case may be. Um, Like, how about this one Uh, in Seattle? Ronis Elias in Seattle. He's in the bullpen, but he's excellent in the bullpen, and he's – a starter gone bullpen. You know how that works out, usually to the benefit of the pitcher and the team, right? I mean, starters, oh, yeah, they, they don't pan they out. Can, well, exactly. And that's when you're a high round pick, there you have to try him out as a starter, basically, because that's a lot of capital to waste for a reliever. But if they don't pan out as that, you, you wasted so much capital on him, you basically have to try him as a reliever now. So it, starting pitchers, they kind of have, well, at least high round pitchers, they kind of have the benefit for getting multiple chances. I don't know if he was, I'm just saying in general, though. So this Yanni Chirinos, right, he's, he's listed as number four in the rotation for Tampa Bay. He's made three, hmm. he's started three games, but he's appeared in five games, so he hasn't always been the starter in the games that he's appeared in. But you know how they like to use the opener, too, over there. Mm-hmm. And 25 innings pitched, and he's got... A three five five ERA, but his last few outings, I just think his look at his game log. His outings are are pretty good. Hey, you know, I'm actually looking at wins leaders right now, and oh, you are. Yes, Glasnow is tied for the lead. He's five and zero, oh, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. You know who the other two are? Holy shit! This guy gave up <laughs> three home runs. <laughs> But it, you know who Wait, the other he's two? He's tied for the lead, league, league, lead league wins? Okay. with wins. Hold on, let me try to guess. This is very fun for me. Okay, um, let's see. Bauer is Bauer there? No, he can't be there because he hasn't had five nope. wins. Um, you know it's that's only my at first three. One. Can you tell me if it's the National League or American League? All three are American League. Actually, there really? is not a National League pitcher until. Sixth, and that's Granky at four and oh. Well, technically, he's tied for second. Okay, Verlander. Yeah, Granky Arrieta uh, on there. No Verlander is tied for second with four. Okay. Um. How about? God, that's weird. I know it's just some. Yeah, rookie. I don't think you're going to guess any. Some of these. rookie, dude. It's a rookie. I'm going to uh, look it up because I, I cheat. I don't think they're rookies. Tell me who it is now. I got to know. Okay, Wait. yeah, neither rookie. Marco Gonzalez and Domingo oh, Germán. I was looking at Gonzalez because I was like, is he? But no, I didn't think he was. He had pitched, what, the last two, three years. Seattle, yeah, but uh, Germán for the Yankees, here we go. What's he doing? What's, let me look at this. Oh, he's got some actually pretty nice numbers. Uh, 31 so, and two-thirds, 18 hits, nine earned, nine walks, 32 Ks, five wins, two five six ERA, and a point eight five whip. Okay, so we have to keep in mind some a couple of things. The the schedule this year has been kind of a little wackadoo. Like there's been two now um, that have like two different sets of teams have finished their season long game. Like they don't have to face each other anymore in the season. They played now. It seems like teams are playing the same teams all over the place for like the first month of the season. Like the Yankees, the Baltimore Orioles played the Yankees and the Twins. That's pretty much all they did. That's all they've done. And there's another team that just did the same thing. Well, Andrea, actually, uh, I think Dan will probably need your help. He says he's clueless with Spreaker. So, Dan, Since you figured it out. Yep. I just saw him in the chat saying it. Can he hear us or what? Can you hear us, Dan the Man? As far as I know, he can. Here's Here's how you do it. What do you need or we can get on Skype? Okay, tonight's Monday night. 
And the fisticuffs is scheduled to come on at 11 o'clock. And now at 1028, we got to figure out how to do this shit. These fucking pot smokers all over the place. I don't know what to do with them because I can't really even punish them because all I do is smoke pot all day. So what the hell am I supposed to do here? That guy. How can I punish uh, these get people? Get high with him. Just get high and smoke some weed and teach you how to use Spreaker because you didn't works. fucking bother to learn. And you didn't fucking bother. Okay, so here we go. It has. You're not the only ones, by the way. Easy ha- might be able to help him. Isn't this what he's been using for a while? Easy doesn't even need to help him because here's how you do it. Wait a minute. Check my messages. Well, did you read the handbook? That's one question. Did you read the handbook? Because there's actually Does videos. Anyone? I swear to God, if you don't read the handbook, I will fucking cut you off so fast. I can't stand it anymore. I put a lot of work into it. There's actually videos in the handbook that show you step by step how to do Spreaker. And I will admit today that I couldn't figure it out, and that's why our show is late. So I am forgiving when it comes to this shit about waiting to the last minute. But come on. You can't act like you're... I mean, read the handbook. Yeah. Well, he hard. says I asked. I, asked I even made it fun. I, the I, video I, this morning at 10 a.m. Says he needs access. You're locked out of videos. How are you locked out of videos? This was sent in from Lou like last week. It was sent a week ago. It, you're not locked out of videos because this is a slideshow that I made. I don't think that you've seen it maybe, but here I am. I'm not going to harp on you all night. It's not the right thing to do. I think... Um, we're on the same team here. So let me just get you a link to the handbook. Go ahead and get Spreaker set up. Because when you actually, like, if you're going to have guests and stuff, it yeah. sounds like you are. That's fine. I will help you do it. But it's, I think it's easier than it looks because, um, well. Well, I what, think it's just different. So One of you has to have it. the Spreaker app in your computer. Like, one of you has to have it in a laptop, just like in Mixler when you wanted a guest. One of you can be on the phone, and the other one can be on a computer. So figure out, you know, who wants to work that. And then open up your app in the desktop, and uh, it will guide you through what to do. And it will tell you to hook up Skype. You're going to have to get this VB down this cable but it sounds way harder than it is it actually walks you right through the steps just try it and then once you do that and we'll get you set up we'll check it out it's and I'll, we'll be here because me and that guy are still just chatting around but um like i don't know we're we're testing it out too i still can't figure out how to get my guest to be able to hear the audio clips that i play and that's a that's a real bummer right dougie that's a bummer I haven't been able That's to figure all right. that out. We'll figure this out. Well, I mean, who in their right mind would make these softwares where you're going to have a guest on your radio show and you're going to play a clip? And to me, it just seems like the default should be that the person that is on the call with you should be able to hear the clip also. Like, why are they kicked out of the of the listening partaking? I don't get it. I'm not sure. Yeah, you see, he just sent a screenshot saying he needs permission. He needs permission. Let me check it out. You need permission. Request access. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I will totally help you right now. I'm helping you now. How did that happen? Maybe everybody doesn't even have access, but I would never know because nobody fucking reads it. Seriously, dude. I bet you he's not the only one that didn't get access because this usually happens when you accidentally, you get a share link and then you're like, they can only And it doesn't work for somebody. Then it nobody says work. anything. Everybody should be able to view it. Anyone with a link can view it. Okay, wait a minute. So let me look at it, present, and then I'm going to put this link in the chat room and see if it works for you, okay? Let's try it. I bet you so many people can't even get it, but nobody knows because nobody even bothered to read it. So actually, in reality, Dougie and Dan are actually even better than the rest of them. Is that really going to be what it is? <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to be surprised if that's the... If that's the case. Okay, look at this link. Try that. Really. It's hella long, but just... Oh, literally, Dougie got the same message. I. What is a girl to do knowing that nobody read the handbook? Like, nobody. Well, it says he just skipped it. So it sounds like he got into it still. Doug says that he got the same message and he skipped it. What does skipping it mean? How do you skip it? If you... Uh, Cha-Cha had to take out the first download, and he did get it. He did it again, and it worked fine. I love you, Easy. I love all of you. You're like my little minions, all of you. (laughs) Oh, 
Okay. Anyway, I'm pretty sure... I love it! I'm pretty sure that Kevin's not lying when he says he read it. I bet you. I read the handbook. I just didn't watch that video. Well, do you know how to hook up Spreaker? Well, if you want, we can hop off so you can help out Dan. Yeah, I'll be happy to help out Dan. Um, What else can... That's it. Then I'll just... Dan, are you ready to hop on with me on Skype and I'll walk you through this? Who, um... I was going to say, probably find out if anybody else is in here and needs a walkthrough with it, too. Just knock it all out at once. I could, uh... Seriously, um... I made a video. There's a video. <laughs> the video screen. had great porn on it. That's what Cha Cha just said. <laughs> well, then I guess you can't really learn to use Spreaker with that, right? You can't really do that. Um, but I can. But no, everybody would be watching it then. Chucky. Yeah, it, that's very true. You, you'd get a lot of views. So the only thing that's very – the only thing – this is what I'm going to tell you to do while we're talking, Kay, and just I'd like to have this hooked up before we get on Skype and we can get through this really quickly. But if you go to the website, Spreaker, you download the studio. Have you done that part yet, Dan the man? Let's see. I'm going to put the link in just in case. Copy the link. Put it right in the podcaster page chat room. Okay, here we go. There you go. There's the link to download. Okay, now when you open well, it up. It says he has it downloaded. Perfect. Now let's sign in. We're going to sign in with Andrea Soxfan at Gmail, and the password is, you know the password. <laughs> Aloha is in the daycare parking lot. This is so fun. Why do you have to make your daughter wait? Can't she, I won't curse for a while if you want to get her in the car. I will totally, I will make sure that I act presentable. Three, two, one. Oh, I was hoping it was going to come out. Main question on the studio. You always use our login because you don't. Yes, this is definitely true. So um, let me finish. So main question on studio. You let me know when you're logged in with our account. I hope let me know that you heard the password is Lenny123 with capital L. Dougie says that he's got Spreaker figured out, but it's weird. He set up. He set it up all the way and it wants. And Spreaker works fine, but I can't use my headphones or anything unless Spreaker is open. Oh. Cool. That's weird. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's the one that's nine out of ten. Um. Okay. Well, yeah. That's. Uh, I could probably help you with that, but I have no idea. It's in your sound settings in your computer somewhere, though. No. Yeah. Oh, go in and get her. This is. <laughs> that's such a compliment, and we love it. Okay, so DVD is yeah. signed in. Then yes, he what says he has hell? all of that. He has all of it. Oh, what did I just miss? Where? I, I, I just look up in the Giants-Dodgers game. There's, like, sticking a paintbrush in the hole where the base goes to. Like, the base... Oh, okay, the base is moving. The base... Tr- it wasn't, steel- like, set in right. I know, it's usually, like, that square steel pipe that's coming out yeah, of the ground. Yeah, it, like, only slot fits into. on it. Yeah, it fits on yeah, it just but one I, way. I, I'm not kidding. I just watched him move it, like slide it three inches side to side. Okay, so here I'm going to put this in the chat room. Cop- no, save as, and then F-U. That's what I'm going to name it, F-U. F-U, Dan. Just kidding. Okay, here. All right, this is what it looks like in there. You see where I put the arrow on the left side? There's a, a logo that says s on it and that's to hook up to skype and when you're ready to hook that up that it will walk you right through it but before you do that put this first uh right under microphones and sources on the left side the very top one that says microphone mine says logitech that's my headset that i have plugged in choose your microphone in that one and then the next one down is cable output that is going to be set up when you click on this skype button on the left side where i pointed the blue arrow let me know when you get those two things hooked up, and you're gonna. What walk an through. arrow you drew! I suck, right? At arrows. I wish. <laughs> I really do. I can't. So yes, okay. So all is going well, and it'll take just a couple seconds or minutes or whatever to get you through. Well, uh, you know what? I will okay. let you go through with him because I am being told right I have here. to get off by okay. my wife anyway. That's good. A happy wife. I'm being happy yelled wife. at. I'm all in, dude. You know I support the wife in all relationships. Well, of course you do. All right, dude. Have a good You're one. You're supposed to. Yep, <laughs> you too. Bye. See ya.